entrepreneurship and being a business owner is a contact sport. It is a full contact sport. They will try and hit you, try and bring you down, all sorts of things. And the strongest thing you can have is this, your mindset. Because if you start a business and you're trying to figure it out, there are two ways of starting a business, in my opinion. One way is you start it and you try to figure it out all by yourself. Second way is you start it and you have a mentor who's already so far ahead they can show you the way. But that route, even though it is probably the best route, may not necessarily be available to people or it might not be financially viable to people. If you're a business owner, you may or may not already have your online presence created. There are some mistakes that can be made and I don't want you to be making them when you're starting your business online. One of them is not knowing when to get your hosting. Think of your website as a building and your hosting is the land that your building is on. It's wise and it makes a lot more sense for you to make your website around the same time as when you get your hosting. There is no advantage to you getting your hosting say in January, but then you start your website in December. That time in between you're paying for and you have to renew your host in the year after. Another thing is this, if you already have your online presence, one mistake is you could be making is not actually collecting your leads via your website. This is not the same as general inquiries. A lead is me raising my hand and saying, I'm interested in your particular service. A general inquiry could be something like me asking you, hey, what year did you start your business? The two are not the same. So I've put together an easily digestible checklist of the five biggest mistakes you could make online and how to avoid them. It's called the secret web design checklist. Also, I've got a book and it's called starting your online business the right way. Just go to oyemadeit.com forward slash performance. That's oyemadeit.com forward slash performance. And you see the options for the secret web design checklist and the book to starting your online business the right way. Hope you enjoy those. Now let's get back to the episode. What is hello, the best hello, way hello. to get people to shop online rather than retail? The best way to get people to shop online rather than retail? Um, hmm. Well, first of all, you need to have your either your website or your, well, you need to have your website where it's going to be an e-commerce website. And if you want them to shop online, you got to make it easy for them. So you've got to do all the marketing to let them know that you exist and... Probably the best way would be to start local. So whether you're doing Facebook ads or you're doing Google ads, yeah, and build a list that way and then market to those people on your list because those people have essentially said, we're interested in what you do and what you offer. Um, so we'd like to hear from you. So that's, I think that would be the easiest way to do it in a summary. And I feel like right now, Online e-commerce business can really do numbers because of the situation that we are in. Like we are literally two feet, 10 toes down in this global pandemic. And 100%. you can literally market your business because of this current situation. So 100%. what you could do is put safety at the forefront. You could put, um, something to the effect of you wanting your customers to shop safely on your website it could just be a simple pop-up something simple you could put on your social media you know we are now offering um to go orders via our website to help our customers shop in a very safe and healthy environment and still get the things that they love and need you know, you can put something personal out there like that, and that will kind of wrangle people in to shop with you. 100%. A lady just asked, one sec, I'm trying to find it. She said something about, what about person-to-person -person selling? Um, put your questions in the question it. box, y'all, because they're getting 
swallowed up yeah, lot, in the comments. She said, what about person to person selling for pop up shops? All right. Okay, cool. Actually, two things I'm going to mention. So one thing is that so people want to go online if you're going with product. So there are two ways to go online. Either you're going to go with the service or you're going to go with the product. Now, if you're going to go with the product, eBay, Amazon, but I'll stick with eBay because that's easier for people who are just getting online. If you literally just stick whatever it is you're trying to sell on eBay, you don't need to do any marketing. You don't need to do anything because eBay already does that for you. What you just need to do is you need to optimize your listing. So you have to have the right keywords and whatever it is you're trying to sell. So you could be trying to sell this bottle. You could be trying to sell this mic, whatever it is, obviously for a profit. You just need to make sure you have the right keywords in there at the top and in your description. And then eBay will go and basically sell it for you. So that's a very easy way to get involved with the e-commerce um, side of things. Now, the person to person selling with the pop up, essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a buzz for people to come to your pop up because your pop up is an event and you want people to come to it. Luckily, we've got um, a lot of experience in this because we've got our own brand called Wolves Not Sheep. And what we did, um, and if I was going to advise anyone, is this. Go into Facebook groups. Um, put, put your stuff on Facebook Marketplace first. So put your brand on Facebook Marketplace. That's just free selling, free brand exposure, free everything. Then go into various um, Facebook groups around your area. So mine would be Manchester, but if you're in Philly, Atlanta, whatever it is, and then speak to whoever owns the uh, Facebook group. Say, hey, you're looking to do a pop-up and you want to provide some value for people first before you tell people about the pop-up so you could do it that way then people come through to your pop-up store you say hey i saw you in the facebook group you're the person who said this this and this hey yeah that was me hope you enjoyed whatever it is i told you i hope it was useful but like, yeah yeah i want to get you i want to get one of your caps I want to get one of your tees whatever it is so that is kind of how you mix online to bring it offline um, because essentially a pop-up is an event and then obviously you need to make sure you have everything that you can um, what, what they call your cue cards the things that you swipe so sum up and all those sort of things so that you can take your payment your payment collection um, devices basically next question <laughs> okay wait a minute <laughs> so pop-up I'm gonna piggyback on pop-ups so on Juneteenth there was a lot of pop-ups right so mm. I was at this young girl's pop-up and she had amazing clothes um products and the thing i noticed i guess because i do what i do so i have a different lens um yeah. she didn't have enough manpower so there was like five women in different areas of her like because she had like one of those outdoor tents that she put up so it's like five different gotcha. women scattered and they all had questions and she's only one person. So if you're doing a pop-up, I want you to keep in mind to have enough manpower to be able to capture your future customers because it was a lady that walked away and she was very upset because she wasn't being um, attended to and her questions weren't being answered. So she had walked away way and she went to her group who was you know like standing off to the side waiting on her and they kind of had a little cackles back and forth and i was like man she needs manpower she needs yeah. to bring in some people that can help her and assist her at times like this because if you're checking someone out you can't go over to the left or the right and help another customer choose a product size color because you're at the register checking out your other customer. And then another thing is she only had Cash App as the option. When you are doing pop-ups, you need to make sure that you have multiple ways for people to make payment. A lot of people are, um, they build a lot of trust in like PayPal, you know. So I need y'all to have multiple ways for people to pay. Cash App is not a business app to use, guys. Sorry. You can't do Cash App. <laughs> uh, was it Zelle or uh, Venmo? Guys, 
That's not a business processing app that you should be using. <laughs> Use Stripe, Square, PayPal, okay, um, to check people out. And if you don't have like the those mobile car readers, they're like this big, you know, where people can swipe, then go ahead and you know get um, get one or you can pull up your website have like a a, a tablet when you go and do it and people can scroll and purchase what they want to purchase put their order in and you can like give them the order while they're there you know what i'm saying like make yeah. it simple that and you also need this because okay so i don't want to hurt feelings when i said no cash app no Venmo, no zelly or whatever however you say all that but the point is, you want to be able to capture people's information, their email, their first, last name, their address, and all that. Systems, guys, systems, you need to work smarter, not harder. So when you use PayPal, Square, Stripe, you're capturing their information so that you can build an email list so that when you have another sale or you're offering new products, you can email your already existing customers and that will help you grow your brand faster. Don't sell yourself short. I know it's a lot and it might be a lot of money coming up front, but you always wanna make sure that you are 100% prepared and giving your best at every time that you can. Yep. Now, if somebody says, well, I don't like Cash App, I don't like Stripe, I don't like Square, I mean, I don't like PayPal, I don't like Stripe, I don't like Square. Would you please take Cash App? Then you go ahead and make Oh Jesus. Make um the adjustments. One second, guys. It's gonna pause. It's a call. Just give me one second. Did it pause? It did pause, but I wasn't sure. I was trying to speak, entertain the crowd. But I wasn't sure if they could hear me, so. Okay. So, it looks like it's still working, so we're good. I'm trying to see who else, if anyone else is asking any questions. Actually, you should put the, what's it, the headline at the bottom so people know what we're talking about. How long have you got you, seeing as I know you've got that billion dollar um, yeah. transaction you need to go, <laughs> you need to go check out. I just, start, uh, I just started the clock when we finally got on here. All right, cool, cool. I've invested in school. I don't know why I put question here. marks behind the statement, y'all. I'm sorry. One thing about Nay, y'all gonna, gonna learn by following me, Nay makes typos. Oh, yes. Every day of my life. Okay. Yep. Progress over perfection. <laughs> <clears throat> Drop your questions in the question box. If you put it in the comments, it's going to get lost. And I'm sorry, I can't comment, sir. And I don't want you to feel like you're not being heard or not being seen. Uh, someone said, what about QuickBooks? I think QuickBooks works the same in a similar way as PayPal, that I'm not actually sure, so you need to double check with that, because I know QuickBooks does a lot of accounting, but um, yeah, you need to double check that. Um, what else is somebody saying here? Okay, Definitely next question. Cool. Ready? Next question, folks. How did you get, how did you get started by being an, an ambassador? Well, I'm I'm not an ambassador of anything but Black Noir. <laughs> I think I think they're talking about your um, you know, when you did, you're talking about the dub thing. I think that's what they might be talking about. The you, sponsor, the sponsor. Yeah, the sponsorship. So, mm, give us a source. Tell us. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Adjust. Okay. Adjust your position. Right. Did you see the sit up? Like, okay, things are getting <laughs> serious. That was a ding ding classes in session. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all know I'm an influencer. Uh, you know mm. my brand. And so I mm. get approached daily. And for me, it's like if I use something in my house, why not get it for free, one, and two, get paid to post it? So when I decided to, what I did was I actually asked the boys, if y'all don't know, I have, I have sons. I, so I, when I say the boys, that's what I'm talking about. When I asked the boys, yes, for y'all, I asked the boys to sit down and make a list of things that they use on a daily basis. And once they did that, that's when I started reaching out to companies because kids are expensive, y'all. So, if I could get some of their most favorite things for then win win. So that's how I did that. Um, it's a slow process because I've just pivoted that way thanks to quarantine, thanks to the lockdown. Um, but I was definitely leaving money on the table and I don't like leaving money on the table. So from a business sense, if I build a brand that has over a quarter million followers, I'm going to use the platform on that page and then my personal page and we're going to get paid to use the products that we buy daily. You know, the stuff that you use every day, deodorant, toothpaste, soap. You drink water every day. Think about it. Do you want it for free? One. And do you want to get paid to post about it on social media? I do. <laughs> so Collect that bag. Yes. So Collect that bag. That's how I got started with doing that. And it's been it's been okay. Um just to jump on what you said there, a very because I know a lot of people might be thinking, well, I'm not a, I'm not an influencer yet. I don't have that big enough of a crowd to do all of that. A really simple way, and this is kind of like the individual's way of doing it, is if you go on whatever brand you're thinking of, be it Johnson and Johnson, whatever it is, and you type in affiliate program. In Google so let's just say we're talking about even the NBA you type in NBA affiliate program you type in NFL affiliate program whatever it is they usually all companies tend to I'd say nine out of ten companies will have an affiliate program where they will allow you to join their program and then they will give you your special link and anyone who buys stuff through your link will basically earn you um, some sort of check or commission or whatever so that is like the it's just me myself and i way but i can influence people or i can talk about something like for instance with this mic i could say hey if anyone wants to know what mic i'm using it's the blah 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 if you click on this link in my bio it's right there so you could just use it for whatever podcasting you want to do or whatever things you want to do and that's it so you don't have to be an influencer there are other ways of doing it just as yourself as an individual. Yes. And honestly, you know, when it comes when people say, well, I don't have, <clears throat> I don't have that large of a platform. I don't have that many followers. Child, getting 50 people to see you post about something is a lot. Something that they probably would never think to buy purchase, having their home, having their car, have for their children, having their lifestyle. Just because if you, so basically, if you are the type of person that finds something that you really like and you call up all your friends and you be like, yo, you got to get X, Y, Z. I love X, Y. I just found out about X. I've been sleeping on it. You need to get that. You are a walking advertisement for that particular company. So why not get paid to be able to open your own mouth and share your story and experience about a product that you found that you love? Now, if it's not something that you love, then, then yeah, don't do it. But yes, 
you are a walking advertisement. Word of mouth is the fastest source for people to find out who you are. So if it's a product that you love and you call everybody up and you have these long conversations or you even go out your way and get it for whoever you're talking to, one of your friends or family, then you should be paid. Teach us how to get to the bag, Nate. Teach us, teach us. Get to the bag. Up these gems upon us. <laughs> Up these gems upon us. Right. Next questions. So next I, set of questions. I'm into Forex market. What would be some cool ideas to, I think he's trying to put flush out a business form for this. Up a little bit. Can you say that again? He's into four X, and he's trying to figure out how to turn that into a business. Okay. First of all, I hope you're not one of these people who says four X, and then they just at you and they stop following you, and they have crypto and all that stuff in their bios. Because those guys, I'm like, I don't know any of you. <laughs> I'm so as long as you're not one of those guys, I'm good. I'm good. Um, all right, so you're into Forex. I'll tell you the truth right now. I know nothing about the trading space on that level that I could give you any advice on. What I could teach you or what I could help you with it if you wanted to create a crypto website or a Forex website or whatever website, cool, I could teach you about that. I could say to you, hey, if you want to turn into a business, the one principle is you need to create leads. If you create a lead magnet, you can then attract leads who are interested in that lead magnet and you can build your list that way. That's as far as I can tell you in that particular space because it's not my arena. Um, however, if you check out guys like, uh, what's his name, Financially Fits, um, the e EYL guys, um, Master, Master in, oh, what's his name? Master Investor, yeah. Um, oh, so yeah, the EYL guys, huh? You don't know. See, I'm, I'm giving, I'm introducing some people out here in these streets. See, um, word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> word of mouth, for real, for real. So EYL, earn your leisure, financially fit, um, master invest, investor, um, what's his name? Trap, um, what's his name? Wall Street Trapper. Um, yeah, those for me, those are the guys that I go to when it comes to like the financial side of the world, essentially. Hey, someone knows EYL. He's a, he's he's a, he's an earner. So, I would just make it cool to learn about money. Money is a very touchy subject in our, especially in our communities, um, yeah. because we don't fully understand it. So, I would make some fun and interesting so people can learn about money I wouldn't force feed it down their throat I would just show results um, we all know that the stock market is one of those things where we were not taught it okay and so if you teach it then that will make people more interested and it can just be the basics What's a bullish market? What's a bearish market? What is what is Stop. selling and holding? What it what what's the difference between crypto and what's the difference between you know only a piece of a company? What explain what happened when Apple stock split? You know, like give people information so they can understand. What they're reading, because I feel like a lot of us would join the stock market if we knew what we were doing. Um, and then do it from a passionate place. Don't do it from a place of, oh, I'm fitting to like get paid for this. Do it from a passionate place so <laughs> that people can understand. And then once you are able to build up that trust, then people will come to you and say, I want to pay you for this. Like, allow it to happen. Um, so, 
that's the only thing I can recommend. And I only know what I know because I have a finance degree. But if I did not have a finance degree, then I would be like 99% of the rest of the market that doesn't know. And so you have to put yourself in those shoes and say, what can I bring to the table to those people? Yep, 100%. And don't, I would say if you... Go on, I'll let you finish. Last, last, last point. When you teach, don't demand, don't... Um, um, think of the word and it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't even think of what it, I'm trying to say. Don't force coerce. Yeah, like don't be little people for their lack of knowledge. Don't make them feel like they are basically in a place where they can't get started. Make them feel empowered. Make them feel like they can do it. Make them feel like this is something they should want to jump into. Definitely, 100%. Yeah, I would say if you were teaching financial literacy, then definitely I think a lot more people are financially illiterate and they need that more before Forex. Because there are certain things that are actually good, but they have a negative connotation. Forex is one of those things crypto is eh, mlm is another one of those things network marketing is another one of those things but yeah there are people who have made billions and millions and have companies till this day that are still running them and they're people who swear by them so unfortunately it's, it's just how it's just the way of the world so if you are going to teach forex then you need to understand that game very well and how to market it what i know i would probably go for more would be someone who's teaching me financial literacy which is why all those guys I mentioned are guys that I tend to follow because they're teaching us the game. So, yeah. And then also, <clears throat> I want y'all to understand this. If you, no matter what industry your business is in, please know it thoroughly and through and through before you decide to be a teacher. Um, because you need to invest in whatever this is yourself so if there is some type of certifications you need for this you need a license for this or for that go ahead and take the time and get that so that you can really educate the next person like don't just be out here and throwing up in your bio and then all of a sudden you're this person you know make sure that you are thoroughly invested in the subject that you decide to teach because you don't want to mislead people especially with their money we don't have time especially in our culture to waste money we don't have time to just blow money and just give it away we are looking for results we are looking for financial freedom so if you cannot uphold those kind of ethics or you know just be fully engulfed in what you do like literally you wake up, eat, sleep, what it is that you say that you do, then don't teach. Okay. Like really thoroughly know what you're, what you're doing so that the next person can really benefit from it. Facts. Facts only. <laughs> next question. What about QuickBooks? What about QuickBooks? You ask, you tell us what about quickbooks <laughs> no i think that was that was that was the lady who was asking when we were talking about um how to take payments and i said with quickbooks i think it's a software for accounting i don't know about it being used to take payments it possibly can but i don't know that much about it the ones that were mentioned are the ones that i know about stripe paypal um square and all those type of guys okay then we're gonna we're gonna skip because this already got her answer then <laughs> can you speak on patience and diligence and being a business owner yes Ooh, oh, oh yes let's snatch edges yes <laughs> oh i'm gonna let you start i'm gonna let you start <laughs> so this kind of piggybacks over over the rant that i just went through with the last question at the very end like you need to be patient um Whatever field you're in, you need to study it. 
you need to be licensed, have some type of certificate, whatever, study it. Um, when it comes to growing your business, you need to be patient with yourself, with your business, with your customers or clients. Um, because business is not easy or pretty or glamorized like you think it is. Um, it is hard. It's very hard. Like you have to wake up and choose every day to be there. <clears throat> and it takes a special kind of person to see it through. Um, so be patient at the very beginning, be patient in the middle, be patient in the end. Um, do your due diligence, make sure that you actually own what you say you own. If you don't have a federal trademark, you don't own shit. Let me say that again. If you don't have a federal trademark, you don't own shit i don't care don't tell me about no llc no D dba no nothing in between boo a federal trademark <laughs> you don't own shit and let me tell you because when you get a trademark it trumps everything else when i teach people about business when they say, should I get an LLC, nay, a court, or a partnership, or whatever all the other options are, when they're incorporating their business with their state. So, you want state level first, or federal? Which one you want? You want state level or federal? You go for federal because it holds more weight. All right, so whether you're a business owner providing a service or you're an e-commerce business with products, you know you need a website. The most common problems that I hear from business owners are they don't know where to start or they're confused with all the, this person said this, that guru said that. It's all information overload and it's forcing you to leave money on the table and not grow as quickly as you would like. Okay, let's bring some clarity to the situation. You're a business owner, which means your website is an asset that's meant to work for you round the clock, no lunch breaks. It should position you as the expert, attract the right type of customers and have a system in place for those potential customers to book you for appointments, pay you for consultations and other services, as well as buy your products on your website. And even when someone doesn't pay you right there and then, it should have a follow-up system in place that allows you to collect that lead and then convert that lead later on down the line. And all of this needs to happen automatically in the background. Now, high-performance businesses are the type of clients who tend to need these solutions. And they're the type of clients we already work with. So. If you're in the five figure range or you're already doing six to seven figures, but you know you're not yet taking full advantage of the internet in the way that's right for your particular business, the solution is this. You need a high performance client attraction website for your high performance business. One that's custom made to work for you 24 seven, whilst you focus on growing and scaling your business. So, Go to www.oyemadeit.com forward slash performance, select the option for web design. Alternatively, you can go and click the link in the description or there should be a link in my bio on Instagram. Remember, this is not for everyone. This is for businesses who are looking to level up, scale up their business and stop leaving money on the table. We work with businesses that are a right fit and those that we believe we can help achieve their business and financial goals. So that's oyemadeit.com, O-Y-E madeit.com forward slash performance, or there should be a link in the description below, or there's the link in my bio on Instagram. 
We look forward to hearing from you and working with you. Now, let's get back to the episode. When you go for federal and you get that done, then you can attack state. Okay? We do it backwards sometimes. And it's okay if you've done it backwards because that's just a lesson learned. You didn't know. Again, that's a part of being patient with yourself. But to have a federal trademark is something is something about it. To have a federal trademark, it just puts your business in a whole nother arena that other businesses are in. Okay. And a lot of times we lose our stuff in our communities in particular because we don't have the proper protection you can't go sue somebody for stealing your ideas your processes your systems and all of that with an llc you can only sue with a trademark because the trademark says you own this name with an llc you do not own the name you're operating in or with the name does that make sense so with the LLC, you're operating in and within that name. With a trademark, you are claiming ownership. That is the difference. They are two different kids, okay? Two different branches on a tree. They work together, but they are two different branches on a tree. If somebody decides to steal your design, your, your packaging, your name, um, your concept, anything like that, you can leverage your federal trademark in mediation, court, or wherever you decide to go um, and really get what you need to get done. When it comes to um, this is such a stressful topic for me. <laughs> when it comes to um, I, I'm going sh- to share a little personal story with y'all when I first came on the scene y'all know I started out as a magazine oh I got bars yo I got bars did you catch that drop, drop the bars, yeah. <laughs> we're ready we're ready we we're taking notes yes. we're taking notes when I first jumped on the scene um, there was Black Enterprise, Essence, and all the other magazines that existed. Um, and they didn't want me to exist, okay? And so when it came to me existing, I definitely struggled and was attacked from every area that you can possibly imagine. Last month, Let's say I've been in business for almost five years. Oh, over five years. Excuse me. Last month, I got an email from one of my attorneys that we are finally done with all of the court paperwork, lawsuits, litigations, mediations for me to exist, y'all. Damn. How, how long I tell y'all I've been in business? With essence i had to agree to do print only because they wanted to be they they didn't they didn't want to they did not want any other publication to be printed um to coexist okay um which is they're right they filed their trademark first black enterprise as well cool entrepreneur magazine raise your hand if you read entrepreneur magazine raise just raise your hand in the, in the comments if you read entrepreneur magazine was it my depends on the answer before i raise my hand my that was my longest mediation litigation process yeah i don't i don't i don't read them that i mean y'all they bullied me something terrible they would send my attorneys cases of them coming after other companies and like winning results attached to it. They put me through some kind of a hell that you would never want to be in. So when I sit up here and I tell you 
don't do this, don't do that, get this, get that. I'm telling you because of experience. Now, if I did not have my trademarks in place and all that, all that kind of stuff in place, because that's when they, that's when they stepped in and was like, hold on, hold on. You finna take our readership. You finna take you finna take our clientele. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. The people that follow me, the people that read my stuff, they don't necessarily read yours. So it was a long battle back and forth. They kept firing and hiring um, new attorneys on, in their corporation. It was like a it was a, a tactic to extend it, to extend it. And then it was like, oh, you need to change this and you need to adjust this and you got to constantly have your tagline and you got to do this and capitalize the word black and um, separate the word. We want you to have black panure. Um, and every time we had to sit down, y'all, I went in, in that room, tent toes down, Knowing that I should not be wavered over some intimidation tactics. And literally every time I sat down at the table, I told them no. I'm not doing it. I'm not changing who I am. I'm not changing what I have. So it was a long process to the point where we got down to racism. So you got to understand when you are building your brands, the bigger corporations don't want you in this arena, okay? So when you do your um, your trademark, it seals the deal. It's, it's like the, okay, yeah, I'm here. And there's nothing you can do about it type of an energy. So I need y'all to really hone in and do that. Somebody asked for an attorney in the comments yes so like the black the brand attorney is really good the brand attorney her name is cherish um christine the attorney is good and just spend the money and, and get your stuff in order okay <laughs> that's it just spend the money and get yourself in order it's a lot I know it's a lot, but you can do it. You can do it. And you got to you gotta stand 10 toes down on your brand, you know? So, yeah, get it done. Get her done. Got to see it through, my boy. Got to see it through. 100%. So what, what was the question again was dedication, patience, and what was the last thing they said? Due diligence. Due diligence. So... First thing I'ma say, going off what Nay is after the gems and Nays have already dropped on us. First thing I'ma say is this: entrepreneurship and being a business owner is a contact sport. It is a full contact sport. They will try and hit you, try and bring you down, all sorts of things. And the strongest thing you can have is this: your mindset, because. If you start a business and you're trying to figure it out, there are two ways of starting a business, in my opinion. One way is you start it and you try to figure it out all by yourself. Second way is you start it and you have a mentor who's already so far ahead they can show you the way. But that route, even though it is probably the best route, may not necessarily be available to people or it might not be financially viable to people. So... Let's go down the route of you're trying to figure it out yourself. You need to know what your market is. You need to know how you're going to market to the people within your market. You need to know what your price point's going to be. You need to know what your website's going to look like. You need to know what your social media is going to look like. I'm just talking about all the online stuff. But the first thing I would say is this. First of all, do the research that you can say, okay, cool. I can see X, Y, Z brands and making money in this industry let me see what i can learn from them first to model them that's the first thing i would do see what you can learn from them to model them once you've learned enough or as much as possible as you think then customize it to yourself so it could literally be there is a bakery shop 
within your area and they're really doing well. Or it could be you know an accountant who's really doing well and you want to become an accountant on your own and whatever, or a lawyer on your own or whatever. So one's a service, one's a product. The same principle applies. If you don't have a mentor who's already done it, watch what the brand's already doing. That's the easiest way, because if the brand's already doing it and they're doing it right, then it must be right. I know a guy, and it was on a podcast that I watched where he was talking about, he flips properties and how he knows if he's going to invest in an area is he goes to see if there's a Starbucks coming up. Because if there's a Starbucks coming up, that means Starbucks have already done all the research. They've done everything that needs to be done. So he's working off their investment, their money, their researches, their surveyors and everything. He goes, all right, cool. Starbucks is there. Which property am I going to go for? And he goes, he gets one. He flips it. If there's no Starbucks, he waits until there's a Starbucks coming up. So that's literally what he does and that's how he made his paper but it's the exact same thing you take the biggest brands or the most successful model what it is they're doing customize it to yourself that's the first stage second stage is right okay cool i know what i'm going to serve or i know what product i'm going to give them i know that there's a market now is that in between stage how am i going to market it to the market am i going to do it online am i going to do it Foot, foot on ground, going door to door, whatever. I would always say online is the easier route because it is more measurable, it's more targeted, it's more focused. And if you do it right based on your research, it is not as expensive as doing it offline where you're trying to get in on a radio station, on TV, in a newspaper, in a magazine. I'm not saying that those things don't work, but mm -hmm. they are a lot harder to get right because it's literally throw it out on the wall and hope something sticks, right? Word of mouth. Now, if you can get that, that is the cheapest, the freest, and still the best. But if nobody knows about you because you're in this middle stage of the marketing and the awareness, then it's not going to get to the market. So if you don't have word of mouth the only way you can only have word of mouth if people know about you if people don't know about you you can't have word of mouth so let's do it the uh guerrilla marketing way which i discussed earlier three way is go in facebook groups go in linkedin groups go in go on um what's that site called quora so question and answer sites, question and answer forums, right? Because they will have different topics which are relevant to your industry or brand. If you literally type in whatever your product is or your services, so say attorney forums, it will come up with different forums of attorneys or lawyers or solicitors talking. If you type in bakery forum, it will come up with the exact same thing. So, you know, the people that you're trying to attract are in that area other people you're trying to model are in that area and possibly um potential customers are also in that um arena go see what's being said go see what's been talked about and you can use that as feedback for what you're going to offer as well so now that you've got that you can now go back to those groups and say hey everyone here's my business we've just started this is what we're doing um hope hope um we can serve you looking forward to it boom 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 same thing is you could offer free samples if that works for you. Because a lot of people ask me, should I do a free trial for this person or should I offer free, free this for that person? Me personally, if I go back, if I was saying I'm going back to what, where I was when I first started, I probably still wouldn't say you should do free. Only because if you... If you don't have the resources to provide something for free, as in you don't have income coming in, but you have, and you don't have capital to rely on whilst you're still trying to create this awareness through the free model, I wouldn't do it. Now, if you do have capital and you do have income coming in from another business or whatever, then yeah, you can do that. But the thing is, at the same time, you need to do it in such a way. And if you have capital, you can always do this, or it's easy to do this. You do it in such a way that you doing it free doesn't hurt your brand. Because when people get something for free, I don't know what it is. When they get stuff for free, they auto 
automatically tend to assume that it might be cheap or it must be cheap or some some nonsense you know which makes no sense because the only thing you're trying to do is you're trying to create awareness that's all you're trying to do you're not trying to say hey we're going to be given free because i'm running the business so how are you going to be expecting it to be free so when people ask me on that should i do that free trial or free whatever the brands who are doing that netflix spotify they have capital that they can give you that for free because it's really not hurting their resources anyways really and truly they give you 30 days free and on the 31st day boom they take out their 7.99 or the 9.99 whatever it is so me personally i would say always charge for whatever it is you're doing you can do a free event so this is this is a smart way to do it if you say you're shopping you're doing your restaurant or whatever do a free event get a comedian or <laughs> someone some sort of entertainer who is trying to he's on his come up or she's on her come up hey Come in, we do a, do your free event, to practice your jokes at my restaurant. Cool. Then you say to people, we're having a free comedy event at my restaurant. It doesn't mean the food is free, the event is free. Now people are going to come, oh, yeah, 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 we just came out of COVID, let's, cut, let's go check it out, seems like it might be cool. You can hand out free flyers and all of that, cool. You can do a free event on Facebook, cool. Now when they come there... The comedian, if he's good or he's average or whatever, what even if he's bad, it's still going to be an experience. <laughs> people will come in, you know, people will come in, they'll be like, yeah, it was okay, but the food was great. The food was now, great. the moment they say the food was great, you know you're onto a winner because now you've created the awareness, you've got people coming in, you've got potential customers, and like Nay said, you get their emails as soon as they walk in, you get their names, you get their phone numbers, so now you've built your list. So essentially, you can do free, but you have to do it smart so that it doesn't hurt or affect your brand. So now that we sorted out the marketing side of things, actually sorted out the marketing for a product, marketing for a service, which is a totally different thing, is free consultations, free, um, what are they called, discovery calls, um, giving out free information that's how you do it free basically you position yourself as the authority within your industry so free you're, you're dropping gems on youtube in clubhouse and um on your facebook page on your instagram page on your stories and it doesn't have to be you need to be dropping three things a day you can just do one thing a day like don't overwhelm yourself just do one thing a day one story one whatever and also Remember, you don't have to create, you can always document. Like I was, I was going to the library today to go see if they had some books. I should have actually recorded that because there were some <laughs> books which I was going to look for and that would have made great content, but I didn't do it. But it's just stuff like that. And that is, so people, people kind of see the behind the scenes as opposed to your job in knowledge, the gem. So it's like the full picture that positions you as the authority. So as a service, you want to position yourself as the authority by proving to people you know what you know. So you got to live it, drink it, breathe it, whatever. And finally, the only way you stay ahead. So we've gone from starting the business, modeling the guys, to the marketing, to now we're getting the marketing, we're getting to the market. So now we've got the full three stages sorted. How do you stay ahead of the game? How do you, how do you stay on top of the game? You need to make sure you're always growing. And like I just said, I went to the library to go look at some books, some books by Dan Kennedy, um, which were some marketing books and other sort of things, um, creativity for web design and all those sort of things. That's what I went to look for because they had some of them there. The rest of them I'm going to buy. You need to invest in yourself because that is the best return of investment you will ever get investing in yourself. So, <laughs> so you've got to the bag, you want to keep getting that bag, you need to keep growing. That is the only way. You need to keep growing, invest in yourself because you are the best asset. Now you're at this point where you can invest in yourself, get a mentor as well who has gone so far down the road that he can show you <laughs> all the things the map mm -hmm. the blueprint mm -hmm. because that will condense your decades into days something that would take you four five six years you can figure it out in one year 
guys like Myron Golden, guys like 19 Keys, people like Nay, like listen to what they say, <laughs> listen to the free stuff that they got, <laughs> listen to the free stuff that they got, and then when you're at that point that you can invest in yourself fully, boom, do it, jump in, don't, don't let mindset, again, like I said, the very first thing is mindset, so as soon as you get to that point where you're making paper, Remember, you need to stay ahead of your game. And that is the only way. That's by investing in yourself. So those are, for me, that's how you go through the diligence, the patience, the dedication. And um, what was the last thing? Uh, what was the stick to it, growing. You say stick to yeah, it, growing. growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so that's, that's how you go through in a very... 20 15 minute summary that is it in, yeah in a nutshell as it were so, yeah yeah hope that was helpful for the crowd it was yes oh yay so somebody asked what's the difference of, of filing a trademark uh by yourself and not with an attorney if if you file by first of all trademarks are written in classes so if you don't know what that even means then you need an attorney um trademarks can be contested so if you decide to go in and do it yourself how are you gonna fight the contesting of your trademark you can't do it you don't even know the lingo of how to do it so it's always good to go into it it's like going into a fight a gunfight without a gun or to go into a gunfight with completely armored from head to toe. Um, so you make that decision on how you want to enter the gunfight, okay? Um, now, the ranges, it depends on which attorney you hire. They all have different fees. They all have different stuff that they include. What you would normally get with a filing a trademark is um, the application file. There will be a discovery call because they need to know what you're filing, what class you're filing, and what exactly you want to file verbatim wise. Um, and then you also get within that fee, if something comes up, somebody contest it. If the USPTO office could contest it. Oh, this is, this is wrong. Like if somebody, cause like what you would normally do, the normal naked eye person would file the popcorn shop. First of all, all three words are super popular. The popcorn shop. We're not going to do that. We have to make it unique so that it can go through. Um, so that's why you need a business attorney because they help you brainstorm. And the things I love about business attorneys is that they set your business up for generational wealth. It's not just, oh, I'm just getting a trademark and let me do it on its own because I'm struggling to pay. No, save up enough money to be able to afford their fees and be able to pay it and get the right counsel that you need. None of us are attorneys. At least I don't know if we are in the room. None of us study law. None of us study trademark law. None of us study the lingo or how the USPTO office does, does what they do. Um but you need to instill in some help if you're gonna go into the gunfight go into the gunfight armored that's it armed 100%. not armored armed <laughs> armored right <laughs> um all right what else we got see i don't like it jumbles up these questions yeah like even i was trying to like go through while she was talking to see if but it's just like what's your advice surfing? for the multi-passionate i.e two or three unrelated business interests should i should i take it or do you want to take it that's all you go for the stuff that makes you money first <laughs> Don't, don't believe this. <laughs> Seriously, I'll tell you right now, you are in a combat sport. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is a combat, like NFL, rugby, combat sports, contact sports and combat sports, MMA. That's what you're in. 
I know it lo- it looks dope on the gram. It looks so dope. Like, hey, six figures this, five figures that, ten k a month. Some people making ten k a month in revenue. Okay, ten k a month in revenue is very different from k a month in profit. I'm 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 gonna say that again. Ten k a month in revenue is very different from ten k a month in profit. So don't. We should never let the gram hoodwink us into believing that this is easy because it's not. Go with the passion <laughs> that makes you money first. That is, I say this to every like every entrepreneur, business owner, anyone who asks me for like some mentoring advice or any coaching advice or just what do I think of a business idea? Because because we do web design, we're always like the first stage of what people ask. Before we go to the marketing, anything, anything, we're like the right. We have a business. We want to go online. Here's our idea. What do you think? And we're like, this is not going to make you paper. I always ask people, may I give you some advice? This I don't think will make you paper. You you love pets. You like pet grooming. I don't think that will make you paper in the way you wanted to make you paper. Now you know a lot about. You've been working in management for the last ten, fifteen years. Create a management consultant course. Create a management consultancy. You know how to. You know how to create systems in a management space. You know how to reduce. Like there's a guy I know, and what he actually does is he goes to institutions and he reduces their um, their um, bills. By two, three, four, five percent, if he can. So he'll go to like a hospital. He'd go to like a complex. He'd go to a retail unit, like、um, like a retail、um, shopping complex, and he will say, "Right, you need to change these lights. You need to do this. You need to do that." He makes paper off of that, but his actual his actual passion and what he actually wanted to do was something totally different. Totally different. It wasn't that. Thing wasn't going to make him paper, but now that he makes paper from his knowledge, he can now pursue his passion with the paper that he's making. So, I say all of that to say, go with what will make you money first, and then you can use that to do anything else. Because the aim of the game is financial freedom. That's it. Once you have financial freedom and you have time freedom, you can do whatever you want. You've got paper coming in, regardless of what happens. You've got the knowledge in your head of how to make that paper. If then all you then do is duplicate yourself, which you can do with virtual assistants or training up somebody else in your SOPs, which are your standard operating procedures of your business, and don't let that name、uh, make you think it's something complex. It's as simple as when we get a customer, I fill myself on what we do. And I literally give that. I put that in a Google Drive, and whoever is in the office or whoever is handling that customer watches it first and literally does it. That's a that's a SOP. So it's not it's nothing crazy. It's literally a case of here's what we do in this situation. If a customer needs a new website, here's what we do in this situation. If a customer's Facebook page isn't working, here's what we do in this situation. That's it. Simple as that's what your SOPs are. The moment you can create that for your most the, the things that crop up in your business the most, like your FAQs for your business, you can duplicate yourself. Which means you can get anybody else, train them up in those SOPs, and they can do what you do. So now you're getting the paper, right? So let's say you're making, let's not go with the whole ten grand thing a month. Let's say you're making five grand profit a month. You've got somebody else who's in, so that's maybe going to take out an extra thousand five hundred, but you're still going to have three thousand five hundred to yourself, and that means that you can go spend your three thousand five hundred on whatever it is you want to do in enjoying your passion while somebody else is doing the work, and they're happy for you training them to do that work because they have a livelihood which is feeding them and their family. You're enjoying the fruits of your labor. And you're enjoying it in your passion now. So go with what makes you money first, then do the passion later. That's my that's my take on that particular. <laughs> I 
I was clapping the whole time. I was like, I put the <laughs> everything. Because it's true. I mean, we want to do so much. And sometimes our mind works like that, where we do have multiple business ideas. Don't kill none of them. But no. definitely go with the one that can feed the others. You know, so it, look at it like um, mom and dad. You want to create a mom and dad, and then you create the kids. Does that make sense? Like you want to create, you know, your top priority ones and then you know branch out from there i really encourage you because i for the longest time guys i was beating myself up about this i was like going back and forth and i realized like no i'm multifaceted so i can have different businesses but oh yeah is correct with going with the one that makes you money so that you can definitely feed the others and then you can like achieve those goals, reach that financial freedom um, and, you know, take it one step at a time. Like I want y'all to look at it as like, I made one sale today, more than I made yesterday. I made five sales this month, more than I made six months ago. Like celebrate those very small wins because they're not small. In reality, they're huge. That means what you are doing is working. Okay. You make a sale. That make that means what you are doing is working. And you need to celebrate it all. Um, I know we can we can look at, you know, other people, they nice cars, nice house, all that. Block that out. You okay? you get that. You get that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Block that out and just Keep walking your walk. Keep taking your journey. Keep going down your path um, and enjoy it all. The journey is where the fun is. Is you gonna you gonna look back and be laughing at yourself for something crazy you done did that you probably should have did, and you it's gonna be a learning lesson. Like just take it as it is, guys. So okay, next question. Well, I'm liking this. We need to do this more often. <sighs> oh, yeah. You got your billion dollar schedule. I forgot. My bad. <laughs> Hollywood schedule in the building. My bad. My bad. I forgot. Oh, yeah. I always like to put me on the spot, y'all. <laughs> I used to remember us with starting a YouTube community. Oh, yay. What a what? What are things to remember for starting a YouTube community? Okay, so yeah, because oh yeah, got his and... own YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's exposing who? Look, I I do have a YouTube channel, but I'm not even. I you know what? The fact of the matter is, I have not created a community at all, at all, at all. I do know how to create a community. I just haven't. So. Don't, don't go YouTube think, yo, you're going to see some, like, fire, 3,000, 30,000 uh, uh, views, million views. Nah, it's not like that. Maybe, like, 100, 200, 300, but it's still some knowledge. Now, if you wanted to start your YouTube um, community, first things first is you got to know what you're talking about. That's, that's just a fact. You need to be – you need to – position yourself as the authority and the only way you can do that is actually know what it is you want to talk about xyz whatever it is be it the service be it the product again i always say these two things because those are the two businesses you'll be in either you're providing a service or you're providing a product which means when it's a service you need to position yourself as the authority when it's a product you need to show that our product is the best in the business so whenever people come in they're like, yo, these guys are definitely the ones. So that's how you build your community. You need to give value. So when it's a service, you need to give. And I know a lot of people, this is this is one part where a lot of people kind of get stuck. They're like, if I give away that, then am I not giving away everything? And I'm like, no, because as Myra would say, you give away the what, the who, the when, but not the how. So, hey, to create, in fact, I'll give an example right now. To make a website, I'm going to tell you how, I'm going to teach you how to make a website right now. 
you need your domain name, you need your hosting, and you need whatever platform you're going to create your website on. Okay? Go get those things, then come back to WordPress, which is an easy way to start making a website. And that's it. Those are the three things you need. Domain name, hosting, website. Okay, but how how what what do I do when you see? I've given you the information, but you don't know how to do it. Th that's literally it. Obviously, I'd go into more detail. I'd be like, when you get a domain name, you need to go to this website. You can check out different domain names. You can do different editions. You can give different creative names. Like you can call it my great website dot com or my great boutique dot com or whatever. I, I go into all of that, but the fact of the matter is you don't know the how. And it's not me not giving you the how, it's just it's way too complicated for you to just be like boom 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 and that's it. You can go on any of the do it yourself sites and do it yourself as well. But again, it's still complicated. It's not just a you you switch it up today and then it's done by tomorrow. No. So you give people the what the why, the when, but not the how. And that's how you position yourself as the authority. So I've, I've taught you how to make a website. Now you know, the, you know the ingredients, but you don't know how to put it all together. That's why as a service, you can give people the ingredients. You can do because it positions you as the authority. But people will come back to you, especially if you're giving them great knowledge. People will always keep coming back to you to ask, Hey, this question. That's how you get people asking you stuff in your comments. Hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Hey, could you do a topic on this? Hey, could you do a topic on that? That's how you build your community by giving value. I'm in this uh, group, the, the morning meetup, where um, there's a guy in there called Jose, and he always says it's a it's, it's a race of who can give the most value, and that is true. The person who can give the most value that will move the customer, the potential customer. From point A to point B, you don't have to go from point A to point G or Z or whatever. Point A to point B, and that's it. Some people didn't even know about a domain name. They've learned about domain name today. So they're going to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to go look at domain names. Some people didn't know about hosting. They're like, all right, cool. Let me go look at hosting providers. So they've gone from point A to point B. That's all you need to do. You just need to keep doing it consistently. And that's how you create a community, by creating value in your service or your product, give people, give people stuff that's actually going to help them. Because the people who are going to pay you are going to hit you up and be like, I love the fact that you taught, you taught us how to do this, you showed us how to do it, but can I just pay you to do it? And those are the customers that you want at the end of the day. So that's how you build your YouTube community. At the same time, to keep in touch with them, you can um, divert them to your Facebook group, so look at, look at it as your channel. You post stuff in your Instagram that takes people from Instagram. So snippets of your podcast or whatever takes them to your YouTube to see the full picture of the full video on there. You can say, Hey, to get in touch or join our community, you could have a link to a Facebook group. So you kind of, it's like a cycle where everything is feeding each other. And that's how you build your community. You keep them in that cycle and you're able to interact with them. Hope that was helpful for the audience.